We were very hard on Robert Sala and Kyle Shanahan earlier this season for good reason. They deserved it. They've done quite well the past two weeks. What do you admire most about Kyle Shanahan? Let's start with him. Okay. Um, my uh, issue with Kyle Shanahan always is leadership. Uh, again, we grant him that he's an he's excellent offensive coordinator, which is not the same thing as a head coach. Mm -hmm. I thought his leadership was in the tank when he lost to those two crummy teams two weeks in a row. Yep. And, I, and I was really down on him. I, I didn't think he was displaying leadership at all. All of a sudden, he rises up. Mm -hmm. He beats a good team, the Rams. Now, of course, New England is not a good team, but they have a great coach and a great defensive mind. And you know what? Shanahan outcoached him. Yep. So Shanahan outcoached Belichick, no question in my mind. And he was able to rally a team that was floundering. I got to say, I had never really seen him do that before. I admire that. What about you? Right. We had mentioned that, like, what this team needs is not the next gadget play. It needs psychological handholding from the leader, Kyle Shanahan. And he did that. He did it perfectly. Now, I still have questions about his leadership. And I think the only the questions I have, he can only answer in the Super Bowl. So we'll see about that. But what I want to say is I've actually nitpicked his coordinator acumen a lot through the years. Um, what he's done the last two weeks in terms of just X's and O's and working around the limit that Jimmy Garoppolo has presented him, because Jimmy Garoppolo got injured, he, he got benched, he lost a little confidence. They're trying to build him up from, from the bottom. And I think Kyle Shanahan has done like the best job you could possibly do. The two game plans he had to beat the Rams and Patriots were basically a lot of runs and extended handoffs, and they won. I think it was kind of like a, a master class of, of training wheels offense, and he got a bunch of points in both games. And any coach who has a, a quarterback who's feeling a little shaky psychologically can look at what Shanahan these, did these last two games as a, blu a blueprint for how to win in these circumstances. It's really impressive. I have another topic that's related that I like to bring up. When I listen to you talking to your various other people <laughs> on these videos, yeah, I seem to hear you saying that what Kyle is doing is good now, but you can never really go far with an offense that is essentially horizontal uh, and very, you know, screen passes stuff like that. I actually disagree. Okay, I do because well, I want to say that. Belichick couldn't stop that. Mm -hmm. The yep. Rams really didn't stop that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems to me that they run really well and they do a, a lot of things. Bill Walsh had a very horizontal uh, offense too. Mm -hmm. He would, wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I wasn't alive back then, but I've heard. Yeah, you've heard. Anyway, uh, so it's something that we can check on as the season goes on. But I'm saying. I don't know. You know more football X's and O's than I do, but I was pretty impressed the last two weeks. I mean, if that's a trainer wheel offense, it seems like pretty good. Try, you know, I'll ride that Schwinn. It looked pretty good to me. It's true. I mean, look, they won the NFC Championship game last year throwing eight times. Yeah. They did that. They have an identity, a formula. It works. Um, maybe they can win the Super Bowl this way. It's it's a lot of work for Kyle Shanahan. It seems like it's very hard, uh, but he's up for the task. And what what choice does he have? So it, why not? Why can't he keep doing it? I just wonder, will it work when you're going against the best defenses in the league or the best offenses in the league, like Kansas City, and you and you got to score more? But they just did score 33. So how could you say, how could you put a limit on what Kyle can do, no matter who his quarterback is? Yeah, that, anyway, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I actually not only give him credit for, for revising things, but I think it. I'm not going to rule them out. I was pretty impressed the last two weeks. And that's one of the things that impresses me about Kyle Shanahan. And again, I, I don't expect this offense to look like this in December. I think it's looking like what it needs to look like to win games now. And they can build on it. And if they do, then, that's, then that means that they're a contender for sure. Okay. What do you admire about Robert Sala? Oh. Oh, I have... Uh, unbounded admiration for him. I mean, I, I don't usually give uh, teams a break for injuries. Too bad. That's how it is. But fact is, look at those injuries that he's had, Iggy. I mean, you would know better than I. He's lost a lot. Of, five, six starters? Eight. Who's not injured? It, Warner, Armstead, Mosley. That's it. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, not only, I mean, he may have had private moments where it got him down, but it didn't affect him. He didn't go in the tank. He worked around it. He next man up. He came up with very creative and very stout defenses. So I would say the degree of difficulty for him is higher than it was for Kyle Shanahan. Agree. What what impresses me about Salah is to me him and Shanahan are opposites in certain ways. Shanahan's always been the X's and O's master, and Salah's been more of big picture how, how you deliver the message, how you get your players to play, the effort, all that stuff. But I think people question his X's and O's skills because he came from Seattle, which is like the simplest defense, and he kind of just did what Pete Carroll did. So what I'm impressed with the most with with Salah is his evolution. You, I mean, Bill Walsh used to talk to you about it all the time. It's not good enough to have one idea as a coach. You'll get passed up. You have to consistently evolve or you die, basically. And this guy has been – a. this is his fourth year being a coordinator. He's new at it. And what he's doing this year is like a complete 180 from what he was doing when he started. He was a zone defense team. Now he's a man coverage team that sprinkles in some zone. And, and – he won last year. I mean, they used to believe in not disguising coverages being as simple as possible. Now he's confusing opposing quarterbacks. Cam Newton drops back and doesn't know whether it's man or zone. Uh, and that's solid. I mean, that was stuff he didn't do two years ago. I'm really impressed by how quickly he can evolve. I think it's the mark of a really smart coach. You know, you, you mentioned uh, about Bill, about evolving, et cetera. One time I was talking to Bill and he said, you know, I don't really respect teams that win on pure power. Mm. You know, Bill, they talked about he had uh, finesse. He said, I don't really respect teams that win on pure power. He says, if you do that, what happens if you meet a team that has more power than you? Yeah, Where's what's plan B? B? What's yeah. plan B? I yeah. remember he was he had contempt in his voice for that. Right. You should be able to beat any kind of team. That's right. Yeah. And, and the thing about Bill's teams is they weren't always finesse, right? They had they had Ronnie freaking lot. Fred Dean. Yeah, how, how do you call that team finesse, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, but he he did have a very, what do I want to say, sophisticated intellectual offense, at least, for sure. 